Hi everybody, this is Father Warner D'Souza. We are recording these reflections for this week from the Archdiocesan Heritage Museum. And I'd like to welcome you to this museum also, of which I am the director. Our text today is taken from Monday of the first week in ordinary time. The text is from Mark chapter 1 verses 14 to 20. The Gospel of Mark records the first homily that Jesus preached and it was all of 18 words. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the Gospel. Jesus pulls back no punches. He is not here to win a popularity contest for the religious. His message is short direct and very hard-hitting. To most religious leaders, such a homily would only serve to drive away a congregation. As St. Paul says, congregations have itchy ears and sadly these are often pandered to. Yet the Lord has a method to what might seem like madness. The world was in need of a messiah, not a magi magician, or a great king. It was in need of one who would free them from their sins. Sin cannot be washed away unless it is preceded by sincere repentance. The word repentance in Greek translates loosely as putting on a new mind, a new way of thinking. Jesus' first homily was a radical demand. Change your mind and change your heart and then the gospel comes alive. The gospel records two callings. The first was to all and it was a call to repentance. The second was also vocational from the Latin word vocare to call but a very deeply personal call. Both have a sense of urgency. The word is Euthus in Greek, especially the call to all because the time is fulfilled. The time that harkens back to the prophecy of Isaiah has now come to pass with the coming of Jesus. The call of the disciples is equally urgent as the kingdom of God is at hand and ministry must now be set in motion. The response of the first four disciples chosen by Jesus along the shores of this harp-shaped lake of Galilee was also immediate. The Gospel uses the word immediate each time in response to the brothers who left their profession and their family to follow Jesus. So what can we take home from today's Gospel? Firstly. The proclamation of the Kingdom of God by Jesus is a gift. The good news is freely given. However, this gift, once accepted, also freely accepted, is accompanied by a demand. Repent and believe. Make no mistake, Christianity is not, to use my favourite term, for namby-pambies. This is not some happy, clappy, feel-good bunch of followers. Christianity makes clear demands. Secondly, the call of Jesus is also a personal one, yet with no personal assurances. The Lord is calling many young men and women to work in his vineyard. Ironically, those who say yes to the Lord don't end up meeting a checklist of assurances from the Lord. You can't ask Jesus for job security, salary, raise or perks. Ironically, the only benefits are out of this world and that is said pun intended. The only benefits are in heaven. When Peter, Andrew, James and John were called, they simply left their nets, left their father, left everything and turned right towards Jesus. God bless you all and I do hope you have subscribed to this channel. Don't forget. Share this message with others.